jalan untuk tertubuhnya negara baru Malaysia itu sudahlah terbentang dengan jelasnya. What is MA63? It is essentially a document that created Malaysia as we know it today. The formation of Malaysia took place on the 16th of September 1963, over half a century ago. Now, it is telling to note it was only in 2010 when Malaysia Day was declared a national holiday. Now, briefly, MA63 came about as part of the British decolonization process to give up Singapore, North Borneo and Sarawak after World War II. Negotiations commenced in 1961 with the government of Malaya and the representatives of the three territories. This is where the 20 points, the Cobalt Commission report and the IGC were all part of the process to form a new federation of Malaysia with safeguards for the special interests of North Borneo and Sarawak. MA63 was drawn up on the basis of the recommendations of the Intergovernmental Committee. Now where are we now? It has been reported that Sabah is the second poorest state in the nation after Kelantan. There is underdevelopment, lack of access to healthcare and education for the rural community. There are still issues with access for basic utilities such as clean water, electricity and road access. Clearly the safeguards which were provided for in 1963 have not lived up to the expectations of the people of Sabah. How do we move forward? In my personal opinion, one of the first things that we need to look at is Sabah's 40% net revenue entitlement, which is already under the federal constitution, part 4 of the 10th schedule. And it already provided that it must be reviewed and is mandatory to do so every five years. Secondly, there must be a more equitable sharing of income. For instance, the oil royalty. It is in the Pakatan Harapan government's manifesto that royalty be increased from 5 to 20%. We have it recorded that Petronas made a profit after tax in excess of 55 billion ringgit for the year 2018. Now how much of that was derived from Sabah must be disclosed. There has to be transparency in the process. I'm aware that there is a good legal basis to impose sales tax on oil derived from Sabah, which can provide additional revenue if the royalty is not increased from 5%. But this is based on the assumption that the continental shelf belongs to Sabah and that oil is being derived from the continental shelf by Petronas. Past experience indicates that the Sabah government needs a lot of funds to jumpstart economic activities which benefit the ordinary people, especially in the rural areas where poverty is still rampant and the literacy rate is low. The state government needs funds to finance much needed infrastructure development projects which are not funded from federal sources such as the construction of rural roads. I have reasons to believe that if funds which belong to Sabah had been retained by Sabah, the state will not be in a situation it is now. Many poor people living in a rich state. The state government needs to continuously strengthen, broaden and diversify its sources of revenue. The 40% net revenue which rightly belongs to Sabah goes a long way towards the achievement of this objective. It is therefore important for the federal government to return to Sabah the 40% net revenue which belongs to Sabah. Sabahans have been shortchanged for far too long. This makes a lot of Sabahans feel that Sabah is being colonized by Malaya. Sabahans expect the new Pakatan Harapan government to be fairer and more receptive and accommodative to the legitimate rights and demand of the state government. Having regard to the current financial constraints of the federal government, it should give a time frame for the payment to be made in respect of the areas. As for the current 40% net revenue being collected, it should be diverted to Sabah immediately, whilst the federal government takes 60%. In other words, Sabah should collect the 40% net revenue due to Sabah at source. It saves the federal government the trouble of collecting 100% only to return 40% to the Sabah government later. The excuse of not enough money to pay Sabah does not arise since the money is being collected 
Anyway, Sabah was promised 20% oil royalty. So, Pakatan Harapan formed the new government. The Pakatan Harapan government has now been in power for over a year. It is now high time for the promise to be honored. There is no excuse for not being able to honor this pledge since oil and gas are being extracted from Sabah. Kita memerlukan kekuatan politik. Kita memerlukan satu platform politik yang cukup kuat untuk memastikan bahawa rakyat Sabah itu bersatu padu yang semuanya ingin hak Sabah itu ditunaikan. Benda ini bukan benda yang baru, sudah sekian lama. Tetapi hingga ke hari ini hanya menjadi perbualan politik semata-mata. Kalau kita lihat kesungguhan pemimpin-pemimpin yang lama untuk menzahirkan supaya ianya ditunaikan, bermula dengan Tun Mustafa. Kalau 76 bila Tun Mustafa mula bersuara, Datuk Hadi Saleh meletakkan jawatan sebagai Menteri Perusahaan, menubuhkan berjaya, kemudian berjaya naik, kemudian bila berjaya sudah lagi mula kuat, sokongan politik yang begitu tinggi daripada rakyat Sabah berlaku Perselisihan paham dengan Tansi Pairin Pairin menubuhkan parti PBS Kalah lagi berjaya pada ketika itu Dan apabila satu ketikanya PBS Keluar daripada barisan nasional tahun 1991 AMNO masuk ke Sabah Kemudian penggiliran ketua menteri Inilah saya katakan bahawa kekuatan politik Sabah tu perlu ada untuk memastikan Bahawa tuntutan kita ini berhasil Jadi hari ini saya yakin Dan percaya di bawah pemerintahan Ketua Menteri kita, Datuk Seri Muhammad Safi Haji Abdal Beliau konsisten dan sentiasa menyebut bahawa Keperluan rakyat Sabah untuk mendapatkan lebihan peruntukan Untuk mendapatkan hak 40% tunai daripada hasil Sabah sebelum ini Yang ada dalam Perlembagaan Persekutuan dapat ditunaikan Sebagai anak Sabah, tuntutan kita untuk melaksanakan keseluruhannya Apa yang dijanjikan dalam agreement perjanjian Malaysia tersebut Ditunaikan oleh Kejam Persekutuan Yang hasilnya adalah untuk keperluan rakyat di Sabah dan saya yakin bahawa kita menyuburkan proses demokrasi masing-masing mempunyai hak untuk mengawati mana-mana parti tetapi apabila sampai ke kepentingan negeri Sabah apabila sampai kepada kepentingan untuk kita mendapatkan hak kita bila sampai untuk kita mendapatkan apa yang telah dijanjikan selama ini maka mari kita bersatu hati satu tekad untuk memastikan bahawa hak Sabah hak orang kita hak negeri Sabah akan dapat ditunaikan pada masa-masa akan datang dan juga pada masa-masa yang sekarang ini